The city is filthy. The night sky pours down rain like it has a personal grudge. The rhythm of droplets on the pavement echoes through the city's desolate alleyways, a mournful serenade to the lost souls that roam this town. The rain comes from above, but something else comes from below. A thick black sludge seeps up through the cracks in the streets as if the city itself is bleeding its own filth and corruption. It'll stick to your soul, they laugh. But most people have long stopped wondering what exactly is oozing up through the ground. Just another bit of filth to scrape off at the end of the day. That's me. Cliff Spanner, private investigator. Got a mystery you need to unravel? I'm your guy. At least I used to be. The rain beats against the office window. The only light is from the street light outside. Through the sheets of rain and the dusty blinds, the dim, amber glow casts ghostly shadows across my desk. Smoke curls from the end of my sparkler, turning to ash on my desk. Smoky tendrils fade into the dank air. sign on the door reads Cliff Spanner, private investigator. A sudden knock on my office door shatters the silence. Yeah, come in. A woman steps into the room. Her silhouette oozes sensuality. Her eyes shimmer with desperation and allure. Her face is stunning. She moves with an elegance that seems to defy the grimy streets she must have traversed to get here. I catch a hint of her perfume, something intoxicating as she approaches my desk. I need your help, Mr. Spanner. There's something terribly wrong, and I don't know who else to turn to. Need a light? I thought you'd never ask. What seems to be the problem, Miss... Uh... Call me, Effie. All right, Effie, what brings you? It's my brother, Rusty. 
Rusty Blackwood. He's disappeared, and I fear the worst. Blackwood. That name is familiar. Effigale and Rustwick Blackwood, right? You and your brother are heirs to the vast Blackwood Oil Company that powers the whole city. Tell me everything, Miss Blackwood. I thought I told you to call me Effie. My brother, Rusty. You see, he fell in with some sort of environmental activist. Some floozy named Misty. Misty. She filled his head with all manner of nonsense. She convinced him that the Blackwood Oil Company wrecked the city, polluted it, and that it was built upon the backs of exploited workers and a damaged environment. Can you imagine? This city would be pitch black without my family's energy. That's when I started noticing changes around the office. Incomplete reports, mysterious memos, strange phone calls at all hours. I tried to brush it off as simple negligence, but, oh Cliff, I have begun to suspect that my brother is secretly working with Sunshine Power. Sunshine Power, they're that new energy company. Harnessing the sun's rays for cheap, clean power, right? They must be a pretty big competitor for your oil business, aren't they? Well, that's just it, Cliff. With Rusty in bed with the competitor, in bed with Misty, in bed with Sunshine Power, I fear he planned to bring down the Blackwood Oil Company. You think your brother would destroy your family legacy? At first, I couldn't believe it. We're family. But the heart wants what the heart wants, Cliff. The heart can lead a man down the darkest alleyways. And your father? Does he know about this? My father is a powerful man, Mr. Spanner. The sole owner of Blackwood Oil. There's nothing that goes on in the company he doesn't know about. And if Rusty defected to a rival green energy upstart... Oh, Cliff. Cliffy. You don't think... I don't think... what? You don't think that my father would, in his displeasure, that he would have hurt my brother, do you? I can't say, Miss Blackwood, uh, Effie. Whatever happened to my brother, Cliff, I need to know the truth, no matter how painful. No. I'll find your brother, Effie. The truth has a way of revealing itself, even in the darkest corners. Thank you, Mr. Spanner. Cliffy, please, bring my brother back. The scent of Effie's perfume lingers in the air. It is certain this case will be my greatest trial yet. The stakes are high, the danger palpable, but I am a private eye, born to the shadows, a crusader in the face of darkness. I am Cliff Spanner, and I have a mystery to solve. cleaner mops the floor. It's late, well beyond working hours. Come to think of it, I'm pretty sure someone had already mopped the hallway today. There's something familiar about his weathered face, his tired eyes, but the thought is fleeting. Hey you, someone left a box for you outside. I nod and continue on. Tonight my mind belongs to Effie and Effie alone. He looks busy. He looks busy. I step into the inky black night, my footsteps falling heavily on the wet, rain-soaked paper.
box beside the door catches my attention. A note says, come home soon, love mom. Inside are several goo balls. The street is illuminated with the harsh neon light of a Blackwood Oil Company billboard. Across the way, there's an even brighter billboard for sunshine power. Blackwood's upstart new rival, a renewable energy company. I turn up my collar against the rain. I ordered a hot dog, and it came with these. You want them? Hey, man, you look like you could use these more than me.
Thank <laughs> you. 
I make my way to a dingy bar called the Sour Note, a haven for those seeking solace from their troubled lives. make my way to a dingy bar called the Sour Night, a haven for those seeking solace from their troubled lives. I'd gotten a tip that Rusty Blackwood, the man I'd been hired to find, has a taste for this joint. Oh, buddy, you had too much milk. Let's get you home. What are you looking at, Jump? Oh, buddy, you had too much milk. Let's get you home. What are you looking at, Jump? periphery of the room is decked with sticky-looking crimson velvet upholstery. Tarnished chandeliers cast a dim, eerie glow over the patrons. The air in here reeks of detergent and despair, mingling with smoke snaking up from sparklers held between milk-stained fingers. A lounge singer is perched sinuously on a stool on a meager stage in the far corner. Her eyes are closed as she leans into the microphone, crooning a slow, sad tune, her voice laced with a bitter sweetness, mirroring the broken dreams of the souls huddled around the bar. She looks busy. She looks busy. I approach the bar, flicking wet from the rain off the collar of my trench coat, and take a seat on one of the worn leather stools. What's your poison, stranger? Just information tonight. <laughs> I'm a bartender, pal, not a library. All right, give me a frosty glass of milk. That froth. Say, ever have a man named Rusty Blackwood stop in here for a frothy cup? I've got a photo of him here. He's got a name I do not know, but yeah, I've seen him. You'll want to talk to Misty. Misty, who is she and where can I find her? Just turn around. She sings for you now. Don't go get your hopes up, pal. Now what would a woman like Misty be doing with a man like Rusty? She likes some trouble, you know. But I ain't seen these Rusty in a long distance. Were they, um, involved in a duet? Huh? Were Rusty and Misty both riding side saddle on the same steed? Mm. Were they sharing more than a glass of whiskey? Whiskey? What's that? Were they both two hot bullets and a revolver? I don't... What I mean to say is, were Misty and Rusty romantically permeated? Can't say for sure, pal. Misty follows her old long, twisty road. But I'd say she enjoys playing with fire. And Rusty? Let's just say last time I saw him here, he was smoking. You're not so bad at dispensing information, bartender. Good luck, pal. Good luck out there, pal. Good luck out there, pal. Looks like he's had too much milk. Come on. Let me take you another cool glass of milk, doll. <laughs> Come on. Let me take you another cool glass of milk, doll.
Misty's sultry voice floats in the air like a wounded albatross. She sways to the rhythm of the music. Her eyes move languorously from one patron to another, as if cataloging their sins. Say, that was a fine performance, Misty. You possess a heavenly voice of velvet. My name is Cliff Spanner, private detective. Do you know why I'm here? I'm hoping you can help me out. I'm looking for someone. I, um, I understand you're acquainted with someone named Rusty, Rusty Blackwood. He's not been seen in a while, and I'm hoping you can tell me where he might have gone. For a woman with such a beautiful voice, you sure are spare on words, aren't you, Misty? A real laconic crusader. Oh, she's a knockout, isn't she? She should be illegal. Can I help you, sweetie? Did you enjoy yourself? Thank you, but I'm asking some questions of Misty here. Well, sure, sweetie, go ahead. I'll just powder my nose. As I was saying, my name's Cliff Spanner, private detective. I'm hoping you can help me out. Oh yeah, well, we'll go on then, spit it out. I'm looking for a man who's disappeared. I'm looking for Rusty Blackwood. I understand he's an acquaintance of yours. Do me a favor, sweetie. Turn around, please. around again. Misty, there was a nice man here. He must have run off. Oh, you know how men are, Cliff. You think they're one thing, and then they're another. So about Rusty Blackwood? Ooh, Rusty. He was a promising one. Tell me more, Misty. Were you using Rusty to get to his family's Blackwood Oil Company? Well, you know Blackwood Oil. You know what they do to this city, don't you? They poison it with their oil. The air is thick. Even the ground is bleeding. I tried to show Rusty the truth, but... You thought you'd convince Rusty to destroy his own family business? Yeah, Rusty. A little dim, but he was cute. I thought he was interested in cleaning up this city, in doing something about this rotten family oil business. And he was, for a while. But he changed. He was lured by another light in the dark. Where do you wander off to? Look, since Rusty's a pal, I'll throw you a bone. But you ain't heard it from me, understand? If that's what it takes. I might have an idea who he's been hanging around with. Yeah. Who? There's a man, Dmitry Konyak. He's a real charmer. A gentleman of the night. A distant mountain of ill repute. You catch me? I think I know the type. The city is lousy with characters. Most of them shady. Watch yourself, Spanner. Dimitri is more, well, more than you probably expect. He has the way of crashing even the sturdiest ships into his rocky shore. He has the way of getting what he wants, even from tough nuts like you. What would he want from... Just find Dmitri Konyak, you'll understand. He's usually on the last train out of the city, the Midnight Steamliner. If you leave now, you still have time to catch him tonight, if you hurry. What makes you think he'll talk to me? Well, he won't, not with that attitude. Look at you all dressed up like a private dick. Just doing my job, ma'am. Oh, sweetie, you're just a fool in drag. So is everyone you've ever met. 
Anything else you need to tell me about Dmitri Konyak? You're gonna need something to loosen his tongue. Take this. I have a feeling it'll make Dmitri talk. It's best I'm not hanging on to this anyway. It's been a pleasure, Misty. Just be careful, Fana. Now, Scott, a last weedy. I need to go get ready for my next set. Good luck out there, pal. Looks like he's had too much milk. I'm working this guy over here. Take these and beat it. Scraying, you busybody. I need answers about Rusty Blackwood. And this guy, Cognac, might hold the key. I gotta get to the train station. The echo of Misty's voice trails behind me, mingling with the distant wail of the city. The night is young, and I am not. I see a sad sack in a city cleaner uniform sweeping wet sludge from the sidewalk into the gutter. He turns away from me as I pass, but is this the same guy who was mopping the hallway outside my office? No way, couldn't be. What's your name, friend? Just a guy looking after this dump. Hey, I think you dropped these. I catch the last train out of the city, all aboard the midnight steamliner. It cuts its way out of the city like a neon blade to the outskirts, a ramshackle smear of strip malls and cheap motels that splatter out of the city like an exit wound. The air is thick with the haze of sparkler smoke and the acrid stench of decaying seat leather. I'd ask that you leave me be, sir. I'd ask that you leave me be, sir. I can't shake the feeling I'm being tailed, that someone is watching me.
Here you go, you poor old thing. I'm sorry, that's all I have. Passengers are spread out as if each is harboring a secret they don't want anyone else to hear. I stalk through the carriages searching for Dmitri Konyak. I'm not sure what exactly I'm looking for, but based on Misty's description, I figure I'll know him when I see him. All I know is that Konyak is a dangerous man whose charisma is inescapable. I'm late. Here you can have these. I'm fresh out of goo. A chill runs up my spine. Something isn't right, but I press on. Whose kid is that? Whose kid is that? Hey, mister, you look funny. Hey, mister, you look funny. Whose kid is that? This must be him. Dmitri is a hard man to miss. He's sitting in a dimly lit booth, accompanied by a stunning woman who looks me up and down as I approach. Oh, well, go on then. Don't just monologue to yourself. Now, let's care about scrattling around in that pretty little head. Dmitri is a large man, robust, spilling out of his seat, a relic from a time when indulgence was a luxury. His substantial girth, once a symbol of opulence, now hints at the sins he must have savored. The man is immaculately groomed, his mustache adding a touch of rugged sophistication. <laughs> well, thanks. I enjoy my sophisticated mustache, too. I knew my monologuing would get me in trouble one day. Finally, some winter, I think, is about clapping. Come sit with me, Hanson. Let's wait for it together. What's, what's going to happen? Come sink your teeth into a battered roll. Cognac's voice, a resonant basso profundo, was the sturdiest thing on this rickety train. The secret to the perfect piece of cake is carefully slicing it to just the perfect size, enormous. <laughs> you look tired. Has it been a long night? I'm looking for someone. You've been talking to Misty. How do you know? Did she call you? Uh -oh. Do you see a telephone? You've brought your past with you. Every line under those cute little vodka bottle glasses. That cloud of Misty's perfume you waft them here with. I always told her she wore too much. I hope my acquired scent didn't disturb the other passengers. It doesn't matter. Of course it matters. It's my job to move like a shadow in the night, to not be seen or smelled. It doesn't matter because there is no one else on this train. Of course there are, Cognac. I talked to lots of passengers in the carriages before you. Ghosts. They're all ghosts. Mm. Did you try the ham? Wait, are you saying this is a ghost train? Wouldn't that be a thrilling story? No, this is not a ghost train. I'm not sure I understand. Pick someone, anyone on the train you think you make. That woman with feathers in her hair, that man with a freshly braced suit who looked nervous in the second car. Where are they going? He doesn't matter. Are they going to work? What would happen if they didn't go? Nothing. Nothing would happen. The train would still arrive on time. Their workplace would hire someone else. The papers would still get photocopied. Ghosts. Every one of them. Gruyere. The 
Dimitri. How long have you been riding this train? Maybe I've been on this train for 200,000 years. Or maybe I didn't exist until you trotted through that door over there. The more interesting question is, how long am I going to be here? Well, the end of the line is coming soon. What is it you really want to ask? And you simply must try the salami. <laughs> Thanks, Dimitri, but I couldn't possibly. I'm looking for a different kind of sustenance tonight. I'm looking for someone. Yes, I see. Quality sustenance comes at a price. Misty asked me to give this to you. And what did you say your name was? Spanner. Cliff Spanner, private detective. You seem to have captured my attention, Mr. Spammer. How may I help you? Rusty Blackwood, heir to the Blackwood Oil Company, is missing. I understand he may have interacted with you. Rusty Blackwood. The poor fool got tangled up in some things tickier than he could handle. And he stumbled onto some secrets. Dangerous ones. Tell me everything, Cognac. Spare no detail. Rospi had evidence. Documents that could bring the whole charade crashing down. Charade? What charade? How did you... Uh -oh. I mean, how could someone in your professional occupation... Um... <laughs> My occupation opens a lot of entrances, Mr. Spanner. My real business is secrets. I need more, Cognac. So do I. I'm all out of time. I mean wine. Tell me where I can find Rusty. Be careful, Spanner. This isn't my first case, Cognac. Tell me where I can find Rusty Blackwood. Your entire life has way to this very moment, sitting across from your right now. We're running out of time. To find the man you're looking for. To find Rusty Blackwood. Here is exactly what you need to know. Dimitri! Cognac. Cognac, stay with me. I need to know. Sunshine, Spanner. You need to find the sunshine. Take this. Even here, at the edge of civilization, the streets glisten with black ooze seeping up from below. In every direction, there are forgotten lots and buildings tucked away, left behind, like bad memories. These might come in handy. The only sign of life is an all-night Mexican food stand a place called El Sol. Lately, I've had a taste for trouble and a knack for finding it. But tonight, I've got a taste for a burrito. Dimitri Cognac's final words echo in my head. Sunshine, sunshine. Could Sunshine Power be responsible for the disappearance of Rusty Blackwood, heir to the Blackwood Oil Company? Uh, what? What was that, amigo? Could a company that produces cheap, clean energy really be guilty of homicide, of cold-blooded murder? Look, man, I get paid four bucks an hour. Hurry up and order, will you? Could Sunshine Power have assassinated an heir to their rival? No, that would be too dark, too twisted, even for this city. The explanation was probably something simpler, something more elegant. Bro, what sunshine? It's always night in this city. It's always raining. Are you gonna order or what? Um, sorry. Yeah, I'll have a grande burrito and, uh... Oh my god! 
like a flash of lightning piercing the night sky. It hit me, the answer I'd been seeking, the truth about Rusty Blackwood. This is going to shake the very foundation of the city. I mean, it's just a burrito, bro. That'll be sixteen ninety-nine. An animatronic cactus stands beside me wearing a sombrero. Gotta shield yourself from the moonlight, I guess. It seems out of place and out of time, but fitting for a city that lost its way a long time ago. In this town, even the plastic cacti have a story to tell. lone figure mops gleaming puddles infinitely towards the horizon. Just another part of the scenery. Oh yeah, we're also running a special. You can take these too. The ravishing red roadster radiates in resplendent contrast to the glistening green grounds of sunshine power. The headquarters of sunshine power rises out of the pavement like an emerald monolith sparkling in the night. A gleaming green monument to nature, growth, renewal, and wealth. As I step into the opulent lobby of Sunshine Power's headquarters, a sense of unease washes over me. Rows of potted plants stretch their leaves toward brilliant lights. Glossy posters adorn the walls, all of them boasting about Sunshine Power's clean energy and sustainability initiatives. Smiling, idyllic families holding hands and frolicking in green meadows. There's something off about it all. Even in this gleaming lobby, there's darkness lurking around the edges, like the never-ending night outside is creeping in. Still aching from the gleaming lobby, adjust to the muted grandeur that surrounds me. I step out of the elevator onto perfectly polished tile and cringe, thinking about the grime and sludge that my shoes are tracking in. At the end of the hallway is a set of massive wooden doors, into which is carved the image of the sun, radiant and resplendent, its rays emanating in all directions. I step into a palatial penthouse suite. A bank of towering windows look down over the twinkling lights of the city. A wide desk of burnished mahogany, behind which a lone figure sits, their back to me in a high-backed leather chair.
The high back chair spins around slowly, and a face emerges from the shadows. A face I had expected, despite my hope that somehow I was wrong. Miss Blackwood. I thought I told you to call me Effie. Effie. Mr. Spanner. I'm surprised it took you this long. I should have seen it sooner. How did you figure it out? In a city of endless night and constant rain. Sunshine, Effie. Sunshine is a rare sight. Yes, Cliffy. And yet here we have sunshine power, somehow generating unlimited energy from the sun. The sun that never shines. Oh, it's a great story, isn't it? It makes us feel warm. It makes us feel good, doesn't it? But it's an illusion. A mirage. I can see you're enjoying this. I figure sunshine power is nothing more than a clandestine subdivision of Blackwood Oil. Designed to deceive environmentally conscious customers and the city regulators. It was never meant to provide clean energy, only the appearance of clean energy. And my brother, Rusty? Your brother figured out this filthy secret, and he threatened to expose you and destroy the family business. And you, Miss Blackwood, to protect your family's legacy, had your own brother killed. No, no, it wasn't you who murdered Rusty, Miss Blackwood. In fact, it wasn't a person at all who murdered Rusty. It was the weight of family legacy. <laughs> you missed your calling, Spanner. You should be writing for the pictures. Tell me, Miss Blackwood, why did you hire me? What can I say? I was in the neighborhood and I needed a light. You used me to tarnish Rusty's good name. To cast aspersions about his association with Misty, with Cognac. You wanted me to... Cliffy, hush. It's not as complicated as all that. So what then? Yes, you're right. Rusty's dead. I had him pushed into a vat of oil, pulverized, turned into a few kilowatt hours of energy, and fed back to the city. It was the most he'd ever contributed to anything, really. Why? Because he found you out? The truth is, Cliffy, there's only one thing I didn't expect. That I would... Okay, guys. It's time to clean up. Can I help you, sir? You're not supposed to be up... Effie, are you okay? So what's your name, pal? Cliff Spanner, private investigator. Well, yeah, you're playing as Cliff Spanner right now. Good work, by the way. It's one of the less common endings. Usually the private eye doesn't make it out of the lounge. Too many distractions. Listen, buddy, what's going on here? What happened to Miss Blackwood? Right, Miss Blackwood. You know how these things go. This is where she confesses. She confesses to the crime, she confesses her love, blah, blah, blah. The fun is all the stuff before. I always skip the denouement. What are you talking about? Take a look out there, Cliffy. See that city? It was built for you. Well, not for you. It was built for you. Like I said before, what's your name, pal? Um, I already told you. I'm Cliff Spanner, private investigator. Yeah, the private eye is always a little thick. Hang on. Let's force quit this scenario. You see, it's my fourth husband. He's missing. Can it won't you please help me? Dang it. Hang on. Our credit card machine isn't working, so you'll need to download the app. Bah! Wrong again. God help me. Blast it all. Okay, this has got to be it. Now we're talking. Cheers. So, tell me, how are you enjoying World of Goo 17, the Black Stain? Who are you? I saw you outside my office and... And outside the lounge and on the train. Yeah, I get around. What's going on? You and me, we're in World of Goo 17. It's a pretty good sequel. A little off-brand, maybe. But heck, I'm biased. Sequel? Yeah, I know. Some of the sequels were terrible. 
World of Goo 21 wasn't even a game. It was just a program that generated gameplay video. Infinite generated content you could stream on your streaming platform to your fans or whatever forever. You could be a content creator without the inconvenience of having to create content. So, you're not a cleaner? I'm just another filthy player, just like you. Or I used to be anyway. What do you mean? I'm just a fan of the world of Goo games. There were so many sequels. They really milked that franchise, didn't they? Uh -huh. Well, yeah, I thought I was playing World of Goo, too. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. They still had some good ideas back then. I bought all the sequels, even the terrible ones. I'm a completionist, you could say. I like to be comprehensive. How many sequels were there? It looks like you've been playing some of them. I guess I'm more of a curator these days. I've made all the sequels available to play here. I think World of Goo 6, 9, and 11 are still working up there. Did you enjoy Goo? It was so stupid, but in a good way, I thought. What do you mean, you used to be a player? These games came out a long time ago. Not much of the world is left from back then. I didn't think people were even around up there anymore until you showed up. But I think I've helped keep this franchise alive and more or less playable. So how are you talking to me now? It turns out World of Goo 17 was Turing complete. So I programmed myself into the game. It wasn't my favorite sequel. Too wordy for my taste, but it let me live forever. So I rate it four out of five stars. Um, I'm sorry, that means the real you died. I mean, a long time ago. Yes, I expect so. How about you? What's your name, pal? Uh, I was playing World of Goo 2, and suddenly the game said I was in World of Goo 17, and made me Cliff Spanner, so I just played along. Hmm. I've played World of Goo 2 hundreds of times, and that's not what happens. What chapter are you in? I'm in Chapter 4. Chapter 4 in World of Goo 2 is supposed to be set in a television animated series spin-off. I guess I just thought you were like the wacky character in World of Goo games that you meet near the end of the fourth chapter. This isn't right. So, cleaner? Or curator? What do you really look like? Are you sure you want to see? I'm glad you visited. It must be lonely here, spending eternity inside the 17th sequel. It's been a long time, but the art in four or five of the scenes is pretty good. I like to hang out in some of them. I don't think I would want to live forever inside a noir-themed sequel. I eat a lot of late-night burritos. Thank you for keeping the world of Goo sequels alive and playable after all these years. It was my pleasure. As long as this computer remains powered on, I will continue to live forever and keep the memory of these games alive. Is there anything I can do for you? Well, uh, maybe there is one thing. Sure, what is it? Well, I made some World of Goo fan fiction levels, but nobody has ever played them. Do you want to play one? Uh, I mean, um, sure. Oh, great. I hope you like them. Just walk that way. Hello? Um, sorry I tripped on this power cable. Is that bad? Is anyone there? Okay, I'll just plug this back in again. <laughs>